Hey there everybody, it's Nathan Cool with NathanCoolPhoto.com and in this tutorial I want to show how you can do some fake tilt shifts for real estate photography, in particular applying them to kitchens. This is a very important part of the house where unless you have a tilt shift lens it can be very difficult to show the features of the counter, maybe some of the stove top, some of the other critical selling features without showing a whole lot of ceiling if you still want to be able to keep your verticals vertical. Now there's two techniques to doing this. One technique I showed was a few videos back where I did a very large entryway. This though is going to be a little bit more finesse. It's actually very easy to do and of course it saves you a lot of money from using a, a tilt shift lens. Now there's no replacing a tilt shift lens but in fact today I don't even use one anymore. This is a technique since we got into the digital age we can correct verticals quite a bit but we have to plan ahead what those shots are going to be. So I'm going to cover two different examples off of a kitchen and talk about that. To save some time through this, I'm not going to show the entire post-processing of doing the flash ambient blend. You've seen me do that on a lot of other videos on this channel and also throughout my uh, real estate photography series. And if you're not familiar with that, you'd like to check that out. I have a link to that in the description for this video. Anyways, let's dive right into this, take a look at this kitchen and the examples I am going to show for doing the fake tilt shift for real estate photography. Ready to get started? Let's go. So here's the entire kitchen. This used no fake tilt shift. My camera height is low so that I try to minimize the amount of ceiling that's in there. But once again, you can still see this is an older house where it's got the lower ceilings. So I still have a lot of ceiling in there. If I try to show more of the counters, I'm going to get a lot more ceiling. But this is something I talk about in shot lists. When you're doing the common kitchen sequence, you got to show it all. So be able to show everything first, then break it apart into the critical counters counters, those different selling elements that you should be shooting. So this is the first shot. Anyways, the next thing, breaking it down into its various components, I want to be able to show the island. So when I started shooting the island, this was the ambient shot. And you can see it doesn't look like a very good shot. Even as I go forward and I'm starting to apply my flashes to it, you're wondering like, well, why am I seeing so much ceiling? Why is this shot so wide? I'm just trying to show the island. It's because at the end of the day, this is the picture this is what it finally looked like. So the idea behind this, if we go through the processing, is once I did the flash ambient blending, it looked like this. Still looked like it did pretty much when I had the ambient shot, except of course now by being a applying flash and flash ambient, then I've got the correct colors because I've got the flash as my base layer for color, ambient was just luminosity, all those things that I talk about. Then of course, applying then the uh, a bump to it, like I show in the, throughout the books and the other videos, is that we now have something that looks good, great. But now we have to do the geometry on this. So I planned ahead, shot this very wide, so all I really need to do is crop it down from the top. So I did a couple corrections here, like this was getting the upright perspective, I played around with it, does it look like it should be, where am I? So let's say that this was about right. The only thing you need to do in a case like this where you kept your verticals pretty well vertical is you just take your crop tool and you crop it down from the top like that. So by planning ahead like this, you've got now a fake tilt shift. So you hardly have any ceiling in view. You've got a lot of the counter that's in view. In fact, I focused here on the faucet and you can see that's super, super sharp. So this now is a lot better than something that would try to show all that ceiling. Now, if I had shot closer, and still try to keep my verticals, then I wouldn't be able to have the view all the way down of the island. So that's the idea behind using fake tilt shift. That's technique number one, which is very simple. All that it was, was cropping down from the top so that we got this. So very, very simple technique. Now, the other technique that is used, it's similar to some degree, but it uses somewhat of an angle. So let's take a look at now uh, uh, the next example, which is when I went over here to shoot the stove. Now I wanted to be able to show the stove top a little bit, still wanted to be able to show the range hood up here. This is the ambient shot. Some of the backsplash didn't need to show the counters, but I did want to show the countertop. So to do that, once again, it turned out as a f to look like this 
after the flash ambient blending. And this gets then a little bit trickier. So here I applied the bump, that was the next step to it, but the next thing was adjusting my verticals. So what you would do is at this point, before cropping it down from the top, is correct your verticals by just using the vertical slider here in Lightroom. Now, you also have this available to you uh, by doing Adobe Camera Raw in Photoshop. But here, I'm able to now adjust those verticals. I've got this extra stuff up here, but since I shot extra wide, then I can just, once again, like on the other example, I can crop down from the top to where I like it. So that may be good enough. You could still play around maybe a little bit more with the verticals, get it to where you like it, keep cropping it down. And in fact, we might even just crop it more because I'm really just trying to focus in on this stove and stove top. So that may be what I want. Now remember, this is gonna be on MLS. And so you do wanna show some detail to some degree. You don't wanna zoom in and just get a, a real close shot of the, the kettle on top of the stove. But this gives that critical counter view that I talk about so much in shot lists. So once again, we started out with something that just looked like this, angled down a little bit, still shot wide, and then also uh, the flash was added to it, the flash ambient blending then in the final stage looked like this, and then once we applied our bump, it looked a little better. But once we did all of our vertical uprights and of course cropped it down, we got this type of product. So this is better. And once again, you can adjust that as you want to whatever vertical and all that. Now you have to be careful that you don't do too much distortion on this. You have to know how well your lens is. For instance, I know on the Takina 16 to 28 F2.8 that I like to use and I talk about throughout the videos in my books is that at 16 millimeters, it can really start introducing some distortion if you're not careful. So make sure you're as level as possible, the horizontals are where you are, and don't push it too far. Also, since you're gonna be bringing it upright, you might start distorting this. As you bring your verticals towards you, then you're gonna start getting some of that wide angle distortion. Watch that counter, it starts getting a little bit longer, so that's something to be careful for. But anyways, and when it's all said and done, the final product then looked like this. Okay, let's move on to another example. Very, very simple one, and it's where I wanna show the view of the kitchen from this way. Now, once again, this is the ambient shot, and you can see tons and tons and tons of ceiling. Now, that island is very close to me, and if I were to tilt down and try to bring that back, it's gonna distort the heck out of that. It's gonna make it look like a very odd picture. So I ended up doing a whole bunch of flash on this. There was a very dark house, by the way, and this was enough flash to once again get the goal of it, which is the color. Colors. You can see I've got colors all the way throughout the space. That's good. I have enough ambient then to work with. So that at the end, this is what I had. Now, if you notice, there's a lot of ceiling that went away. Why? That's because all I had to do was, after it was edited, applying the bump to it, I really just needed to play around with bringing that crop down. So by cropping it down then, you see I've cropped down from the left-hand side here. I was able to get rid of a lot of that ceiling. I don't need to show this blank wall over here, so I purposefully shot wider than I needed to just so that I can crop it down. Then of course did a few other adjustments and when I finally gave the product, it looked like this. So that's really all there is to it. It's a matter of just shooting wider, sometimes tilting your camera down, and then making sure your verticals are vertical, but most importantly, cropping down from the top. So you have to plan ahead for a fake tilt shift shot. So I see this a lot. It's like I can tell it's like I'm in an older house. The ceilings are very low. I know what's going to happen, especially if they have the countertops kind of high. So that's when I go up, I shoot a little bit higher, tilt it down, shoot a little bit wider and then I have all that room to play with. Now before you go on site and you try this, I do suggest trying this at home. Remember your home is your lab. This is the best place to try it out. You don't have to clean it. You're not going to be posting these pictures on a Facebook group. You can if you want, but really this is for your own edification, for your own practice, so you can start honing these techniques. You then can see also how far you can push it. By the way, also before I end this all, you might have noticed I got a whole bunch of little doodads 
doodads over here. These are all different triggers. So I have a whole slew of things here. There's an upcoming video I'm gonna cover on some triggers as we go into 2020. Some things since Cactus did discontinue it, some of the white balance problems that we're still having with some of the Godox stuff, some of the alternatives, the various flashes also on multi-pin, single pin, how that's all working. So I've had a whole slew of equipment doing a whole bunch of lab testing on that, and I'm gonna be talking about that in an upcoming video. So if you wanna see that, and also if you did like this video, you wanna to subscribe to my YouTube channel, you can just subscribe to it. It won't cost anything, and as soon as one of these videos are posted, you'll be the first to know. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, take care, be safe, and get out there and shoot something.